Hi, my name is Kent Lee and I teach computer science at Luther College. Okay, so in this next lesson here, in lesson nine, we're going to make the frogger applicate the frog actually get hit by the cars or be able to jump on the logs. Um, that's our goal in this one. Right now, uh, the frog and the, the logs and the race cars uh, seem to intermingle peacefully, but uh, that's not always the case, as we know with uh, frogs. So we're going to um, get ready for the next lesson here. We're going to open up Spotlight Search and we're going to type in Terminal to get going. And um, we're going to, uh, if you're on a Windows machine, again, you can use the Git Bash shell. Um, we're going to CD to go home, CD into Documents, okay, CD into Programming, and then CD into Frogger. And then we're going to do a git checkout dash f, and it's going to be lesson uh, nine in this case that we're working on. Okay, so then we'll start up wing. And wing should probably bring up Frogger. I happen to have this other tab open. I'm just going to go ahead and close that. Uh, we aren't really working with that. It's Frogger that we're working with. So here's the issue. Um, we need to somehow figure out when a frog and a race car are next to each other. Now, this turns out to be a problem for mathematics, and that's why we have the math imported here, because we're going to have to do just a little bit of math. What we're going to do is what's called a um, is uh, build a, a basically a right triangle. So I'm going to show you just a little bit of how that might be done um, so you can kind of see what's going on here. So I'm going to um, draw a picture here for you of what I am talking about. And I've got a few lines that I'm going to uh, um, that I'm going to use to do this. Um, so let's see here, connections is what I need. And I want some straight lines so I can kind of show you what's going on here. Okay, so I am going to compute the distance between any two points. So let's say that those are two points there, one being the center of the frog and one being the center of a race car, okay? So if I want the distance between those two points, I can construct from this a what's called a right triangle. Okay, I'm trying to get this to line up just right there. So I'm going to build a right triangle from this. And um, that right triangle going to look something like this. Okay. Now associated with every right triangle, with every point on the plane are two coordinates, an x and a y coordinate. So we're going to give this as an x and a y coordinate. We're going to call that x1 and y1 there. Okay. And we're going to give another coordinate down here to this one. We're going to call that x2, comma y2. Okay. So I want to know what's the difference between x1, y1 and x2, y2. What's the distance between those two things? Well, if I go straight down on my triangle, the y, the x the x's do not change. The x would be the same. So this coordinate, this point right down here, okay, is going to have um, x1 as its, as its x coordinate. And going straight across on a line does not change the y at all. So the coordinate there is y2 for the for the y component of that. So now I know all three components, all three points here. Um, these two points, x1, y1, and x2, y2, and this one's derived from those other two points. Okay, 
So I want to know what's this distance, and guess what? That's the hypotenuse of a right triangle. And we know how to find the length of the hypotenuse because it's a squared plus b squared. So we can think of this as being our a, if we like, and this is our b right there. Okay. Well, um, so I'm going to make this bigger so that we can see what's going on here now. Um, so let's see here. We'll zoom in on it. Um, and that's a bit too big. Okay, so that's our triangle, and we want to compute this, um, this high, the length of this hypotenuse, and that means that we want a and b. Now, let's see here. The length of a, a is equal to, well, I go straight up and down, and I said the x's don't change, so it's only going to be the difference in the y's to get a. So it's going to be y1 uh, minus y2, assuming that y2 is smaller than uh, y1 there. And likewise for the b's, if I want to find out what, they're e what the b side is equal to, the y's don't change. So it's just the x's that change. So that's going to be x2 uh, minus x1 there, assuming that x2 is bigger than x1. Okay, So those are the two distances. Um, and that means then that I've got this formula a uh, squared uh, plus b squared equals c squared. And solving for c, that means that c is going to be equal to plus or minus, but we're talking about distance, so we don't really need to worry about the plus or minus. Um, but it's going to be the square root of, uh, of a squared okay, plus b squared. That's what c is going to be equal to. So C, the length of C, which is our hypotenuse here, the length of C is equal to this in the formula, and A is equal to y1 minus y2. So that means that, uh, and B is, we know what B is equal to as well. So that means that we're able now to, um, to continue this on and say that C, is going to be equal to the square root of, and then a is, as we said, uh, y1 minus y2, and we're going to square that, okay, and we're going to add to that um, the b, which is equal to x2 minus x1 um, squared as well, and we're doing the square root of that whole thing. So there's our formula for computing the length of C, and the length of C is the distance between any two points in the plane there. So then there's our formula for it. So we're going to go ahead and write some Python code at this point to be able to uh, do the same kind of thing. We're going to define a function for ourselves, and our function is going to be called distance. And we're going to pass in x1, um, y1, okay, x2, y2. And we can do everything we just talked about here in this code. So we'll just take a look at that. And, um, and we'll try to do these side by side here for a moment so we can look at both of them as we're writing the code. Okay, so here's our, here's our distance formula. We're going to say that a is equal to y1 uh, uh, minus y2, b is equal to x2 uh, 
minus x1, okay? And then we can say that c is equal to, and in math we have a square root function, okay? And we can do uh, b and squared is, is done that way, um, or a squared, I guess we wanted first, plus b squared, and there's the square for that. And we're doing the square root of the whole thing there. Okay. So that gives us all of that gives us the distance between any two things. So if I return C, I'm returning a distance between a frog and a car in our case. Okay. All right. So I can use this distance formula and the place the logical place to use that is inside of race car when I am moving the race car forward every time I move it it's possible that the race car and the frog are getting closer so I'm going to go into the to this forward I'm going to pass in the frog to this forward function here so that I can check to see what the distance is between these two things um, now, I, so I'm going to start that, I'm going to start it right up here before I wrap things around, and I'm going to say, let's find out what that frog distance is. So the frog distance is going to be equal to, and we'll call distance, and we'll pass in the x core of the frog and the y core of the frog, frog dot uh, y core. Core. So those are the coordinates for the frog, and then we need the, the coordinates of this race car. So that's going to be self dot x core and self dot y core. Now I'm going to expand this back out. I think we're kind of done with that picture anyway, so we can see everything that's going on here. So we got frog is, and we've got the x coordinates and the y coordinates for both the frog and the race car here. So we want to know are they sufficiently close? And you have to play with this a, a bit you to kind of figure out what's sufficiently close. And we're going to say if it's less than 40 uh, pixels or 40 units, then then they have collided. So we're going to do a self dot screen dot update at this point and um, the self dot get screen excuse me self dot get screen and we're doing a left pair and right pair and we'll do an update so we can see that they are real that the frog has really been run over by the race car and then we're using going to use TK enter and bring up a message box and we'll just do a show info uh, message box. And I had to look this up um, in the TK enter documentation, but we'll want to write something like you ran me over. Okay. And I think in that case, then we're going to go ahead and return a false here saying that we were not able to move the race car because they because it ran over uh, the frog. So at the end of this whole thing, we're going to return true. So looking at the code now, we've got this class race car. We computed a frog distance there. And that if that distance is less than 40, then we're going to be run over and we're going to return false to indicate that we were run over. And if not, we're going to return true to say that we didn't get run over. Back down and animate then. When I call car forward, I have to pass in the frog to it now. That's required to be passed into this car.forward. And this returns true or false. So if not car dot forward. That means that if the frog got run over, um, we might want to do something with that information. So maybe what we want to do is reset the frog. So we'll do a frog dot go to 
and we'll maybe go to 0 comma minus 250 again to start over. Okay, so let's run it and see what happens here. Um, int object is not callable and that was on uh, up here in the distance and let's see here frog distance and I had distance as a parameter here so I don't want that's the problem right there I don't want to use distance in two different ways within the within the race car so we'll change one or the other we'll just change this one to dist instead of being distance and then we'll have to change that down here to dist as well instead of distance so we don't want two things named the same and I just made that mistake myself so okay so now I gotta click in the window so I can move and I get up there and sure enough I get run over by a car and it moves me back to uh, square one at that time so you can see here it says you ran me over as soon as I click OK I come back here and start over again so and that should work for all the cars because the code we write the code once and we can use it for every object okay so that's taken care of uh, of being run over by a uh, car in the next lesson we'll figure out how to jump onto a log